Oh, hey, Gary. Uh, so, yeah, time for a response. Today I'm drinking something that's a little different for me. It's a local brewery again, L Hinterlands Luna Coffee Stout. I don't normally drink a lot of stouts, but this is a good one. It's not really bitter, which is weird for a stout, but also really nice. It's It tastes enough like coffee that, I don't know, I can drink more than just one or two of them, which is pretty much normally my limit for stouts at one sitting because they're just so heavy. But anyway, uh, in response to your video from the last time, a lot's happened, obviously. Um, nationally and internationally since that last video, but I thought I'd just kind of continue instead of diverting into all the shit going on to talk about the interesting thing that you brought up in the last video, which I've actually done a lot of thought and some research on, which is the problem with um, people believing the truth that fits their identity and not thinking about it. And part of that, there's really two reasons for it that I'm aware of. One first and worst is confirmation bias. We only believe things that actually already support what we already believe. And if you tell somebody like an anti-vaxxer or a climate change denier, like, hey, here's empirical evidence that refutes what you believe, they're more likely to shut down and come up with excuses for why that information isn't valid. Rather than think about it, because you're not questioning an idea, you're questioning their identity using ideas. And that's the other part of the problem is the tribalism that shows up because we as a nation are incredibly tribalistic right now where there's like teams everywhere on every subject, pro and anti everything, and it's all tied into identity, social media, and so none of it is based on fact anymore for the most part. It's all just garbage. And that's a big part of where this all comes from. There's actually a really cool study that they did to prove this. And what they did was they took real public policy positions and lied about who made them. And then they gave them to people and said, what do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think about, you know, Bernie Sanders is for a flat tax or Trump is, you know, wants to start a carbon marketplace or something, you know, just they'd take Democrat positions and assign them to conservative people, and then they'd take conservative positions and assign them to liberals, and then they would give them to people and say, what do you think about this policy that this person said? And no one liked the policies that they agreed with because the person suggesting them was the wrong team. Isn't social science so much fun? But yeah, so that's a huge reason for that, that whole thing you're going on about in regards to the uh, Thanksgiving Day story. The truth doesn't matter. It's about identity and relating. And it's not just that people don't think about these stories. They want just simple stories that they don't have to think about. They want simple stories that they can retell as if they were their own so that they can establish themselves as an intellectual person with an identity that registers as you know, a colonial apologist or a traditionalist or whatever stupid label that they put on Facebook nowadays, basically. And that's where all of this stuff comes from. It's, it's really horrendous, and I try to fight it. Um, I'm in some online communities that deal with politics because I like politics, and I frequently find myself telling people who are on my team to shut the fuck up, basically, because the things they're saying are stupid, wrong-headed, or they're just, they got their heads up their own asses in the echo chamber. And those echo chambers are everywhere now, because self-segregating, it used to be white flight into the suburbs, and now we're self-segregating online, too. So you only find what you're looking for, and you get what you are, not input from various perspectives. That's how there can be a Black Lives Matter movement and a Blue Lives Matter movement at the same time that don't interact with each other, don't relate to each other, and don't kind of cross the divide where there is overlap to say, you know, we don't 
we're not anti-cop, we're anti-corrupt cop, and we want to deal with that, versus all cops are saints, and the end. Oh, crap. So, my computer battery is super low, and uh, I didn't realize it before I started this, so I'm going to have to try and wrap up real quick before this thing goes nuts and gets mad at me. But, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's where all this crap comes from, confirmation bias and tribalism. And uh, as far as you trying to make a difference as a teacher, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you should think about doing other than just teaching classes. You can sell curriculums online. You can craft things for other people to teach, which I know you could probably make good shit. There's probably communities where you can organize teachers around central themes to affect curriculum and wider influences of students. And of course, uh, in 2024, when I run for president, you could be my secretary of education in my cabinet, so, you know, there you go, there's an option for you, career path, think about it, talk to you later.